how does a mixer that was made in 2012 become the goat of all mixers and seems to be in everybody's IEM rig, their tour rigs, and is even used for front of house still to this day? We'll get to it in this video. If you're in a band or you've started to think about doing your own sound or maybe even doing a sound job, you've heard of the X32 and the M32 mixers. They are everywhere. And how does a mixer that's basically unchanged since 2012 still the one that most people choose? I mean, have you looked at this app? It looks like something that's out of a 2000s new metal video. Behringer as a company isn't known for making their high-end equipment. They're more of a budget-friendly gear, but this seems to be the go-to mixer still, and here's why. First thing is reliability. I started with Behringer mixers pretty much right when we started doing this band because we wanted to use inner monitors in practice so it wasn't as loud upstairs for my wife and for our neighbors so they could be happy too. That unit was rock solid. I never had to go down and we did several outdoor gigs. We did gigs where it was 100 plus degrees. We did gigs that were cold and it never had a hiccup. It was perfect. Then the only reason that we upgraded was because I needed more auxiliary outs as our band grew and I wanted to have more in-ear monitors, more monitors, and I wanted more options for how I wanted to run my sound. I will say one negative about the XR18 is the built-in Wi-Fi. Just don't use it. It works okay if you're in your house, but as soon as you get to a venue where people are using their cell phones or venues a lot of times have their own wireless, it is gonna fail on you and you won't be able to get into your mixer and that's gonna be very frustrating. Now, it will not shut down, but you won't be able to adjust things. If you're gonna use an XR18, make sure to buy a standalone wireless router for it. Number two is price. It seems like they're right at the perfect spot of being affordable, yet still fairly high end. Back when I got the XR18 and I was looking at getting the X32, my XR18 was $4.99 and the X32 was $12.99. And at the time I couldn't justify almost three times the price or whatever that is, I'm terrible at math, somebody do it for me. But now the X32 is $16.99. I don't know what makes it $400 more, but uh, I guess the market sets the price, right? Number three. It's quite a powerful unit, which is an odd thing to say considering it came out in 2012. I know I'm on repeat here, but it still blows my mind. But think about this. When it came out was when iPhone was re releasing the iPhone 5. And at the time of shooting this video, I think they're on the 15. And if you look at the tech between the 5 and the 15, it is insane. And the only thing that's actually changed on these units that I'm aware of is just firmware upgrades. And it's still a killer machine. This thing can do everything you need to run a show. It has great effects on it. It has plenty of routing. You can do all sorts of fun things in it. It comes with 16 inputs, which is plenty for most bands, and six XLR outs for monitors, and of course, two for front of house. But wait, there's more. Since you don't need to run long lines and have to worry about line degradation over distance, you can run a lot of inner monitors off the quarter inch jacks, and now you have even more outputs for inner monitors or monitors alike. And I can use the auxiliary ones for the XLRs to run other parts of your show. Another amazing feature of the X32 is you can add stage boxes. Now with stage boxes, a great selling point is that you can route it to add another 40 inputs and another 25 auxiliary buses. These awesome boxes can be run via basically an ethernet cable, although it's a special shielded cable from Behringer. But what that allows you to do, instead of running several lines out onto the stage, you can just run that one cable out and plug everything into the stage box and it comes back through ethernet. And that's everything it can do. Just kidding, you can do even more. Let's say you wanna run your own inner mixes, but you don't have all those outputs, you don't have all the stage boxes. Well, they made something called a P16. The one thing that's great about this unit is it's a physical unit that you can use with knobs on it to select and turn up volumes of everything you want to do. You can EQ it. It also gives you a stereo mix. The crazy part about these little units is that you can get a hub for these and you can add up to 48 different units to this thing. A lot of times these units will be used by drummers or bass players that oftentimes, no offense bass players, are sitting off to the back, hanging out, just kind of dancing in place. Where somebody like a guitar player or a singer is gonna be running around the stage so they can't be locked into something. Number four, you can run this thing with a tablet, which allows for several users to be in at the same time. There's even apps just specifically for using in-ear monitors so that they don't mess up your mix. 
The problem is, it's kind of ugly, it's kind of clunky, but it works. You can also run this thing off a computer. Now, the odd thing is the computer program for the XR18 looks just like the app for the XR18. But if you use the computer program for the X32, which looks identical to the XR18, except for it has more inputs and outputs, and then you turn around and you try to use the app, you're gonna not have a good time. The app is completely different. And like I said, it needs a redesign. It is not very up-to-date looking. And it's kind of clunky to get around once you're used to the other app. It takes some time to figure out that not everything can just be scrolled. You have to select the each page you want to do and where the adjustments are. But once you have it all down, it is quite an easy unit to use. If you don't like the Behringer app, which I've never had a problem with, except for the learning curve with the X32, you can get a program called MixStation. Now you have to pay for whatever unit you're using. So if you're using the XR18, you have to pay the price to unlock that. If you're using the X32, you have to pay that once, which is kind of annoying, but it's a very fair price for what you get. Number five, everyone uses this thing. A little disclaimer here, literally not everybody uses this thing. I see a lot of Personas mixers out there. They're really starting to gain ground. There's also the Soundcraft mixers that a lot of people like. Big venues, I've started to use an Allen and Heath. There's a lot of other mixers. But generally in the shows that I'm going to, in almost every bar and every medium-sized venue is using the X32 or an M32 product, whether it's the full console or a rack unit. Which means if you ever have an issue or you can't find something, there's gonna be some documentation, whether it's on YouTube or a forum, or even a musician friend, they're gonna know where the answer lies to whatever issue you're having. The great part about these is that if you walk into a venue, like we play at a bigger venue, and they have a M32 console, and when I got there, I wasn't very comfortable with how to do things quickly on the console, but it wasn't a big deal because you just fire up the app on your computer or your iPad, and it's exactly like your X32 with a little bit of color difference, and you can set up your show and have a successful show quickly. So just with a little bit of knowledge that you learn from your X32, you can do sound for so many other bands and so many venues. Can you say side hustle? There you have it, the goat of all mixers, the X32. It still blows my mind that a mixer that came out in 2012 is still the go-to for many bands and many venues to this day and age. It's crazy to think about. Also, if you wanna pick one of these up, you can get them at Sweetwater. I think they're the exclusive dealer, although you can still pick it up on Amazon, which I'm not really sure how that works. But if you have any questions about the X32, or if you wanna let me know how you're using the X32, hit me up in the comments below. I'm sure I'll do more videos on this fantastic mixer.